Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. He had a dream to create the mightiest weapon ever known. Guarding World War II's topmost secret, he yearned to defeat Nazi Germany. But little did he know that his quest for power would lead to unexpected consequences. This is the compelling tale of Julius Robert Oppenheimer, a man with a vision that would change the course of history forever. The father of the atomic bomb. This is a story of sacrifice, introspection, and the enduring legacy of one man's quest to shape the destiny of nations, even at the cost of his own soul. If it was needed to put an end to the war and had a chance of so doing, we thought that was the right thing to do. We knew the world would not be the same. Few people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. Julius Robert Oppenheimer was a man of many talents, a true Renaissance mind. He had a rare gift for languages, speaking not one or two, but an astounding eight of them. Moreover, he had a flair for poetry, painting beautiful images with his words. Yet Oppenheimer's name would forever be etched in history as the creator of the atomic bomb, a weapon of immense destructive power. A weapon he never anticipated would come to haunt him. When people first met Oppenheimer, they couldn't help but notice his intellect. He seemed to possess an uncanny ability to provide the right answers even before the questions were asked. Knowledge came easily to him, and he eagerly devoured every opportunity to learn more. Born in New York on April 22, 1904, Oppenheimer was the son of German Jewish immigrants. His father was a successful textile importer, and his mother, a painter with deep New York roots. Growing up in an apartment adorned with masterpieces, including works by Van Gogh, Young Oppenheimer was surrounded by an environment that nurtured his creativity. After attending an elite private school, Oppenheimer pursued his education at Harvard. Initially, he intended to become a chemist, but his love for physics gradually took root. He became fascinated by experimental physics, a field that deals with conducting tests and experiments to understand how the world works. Oppenheimer's passion for physics led him to the University of Cambridge in Germany, a renowned center for theoretical physics. There, he achieved remarkable success at a remarkably young age, receiving his PhD at just 23 years old. However, academic brilliance came with its share of challenges. Oppenheimer faced periods of depression and emotional instability during his graduate studies. He even confessed to an alarming incident where he attempted to poison his tutor. Despite these difficulties, Oppenheimer's genius and determination shone through. He returned to the United States, working as a research fellow at prestigious institutions like Harvard and Caltech. His commitment to the field of physics was so intense that he often lost touch with the world outside his studies. But the world's events could not be ignored. As fascism gripped Europe during the 1930s, Oppenheimer's attention turned to the rising threat of Nazi Germany. Fearing the possibility of German scientists creating a nuclear weapon for Hitler's regime, he joined forces with the renowned physicist Albert Einstein to raise concerns about the urgent need for the United States to act. In 1942, Oppenheimer's expertise and passion led him to lead the Manhattan Project, an ambitious, secretive mission to develop the atomic bomb. This project brought together some of the brightest minds in physics, and Oppenheimer's charisma and leadership were instrumental in building a team of over 3,000 people at Los Alamos, New Mexico. Under his guidance, the project advanced rapidly. The team discovered the immense power of nuclear fission in elements like uranium and plutonium, and they successfully detonated a plutonium bomb on July 16, 1945. 
It was a moment that forever altered the course of history and left the world in awe and trepidation. The realization of what they had accomplished weighed heavily on Oppenheimer and his fellow scientists. The atomic bomb had the capability to bring about unimaginable destruction. It posed a grave moral dilemma. Would its existence bring about peace through deterrence, or would it lead to the annihilation of civilization? In the aftermath of World War II, the world bore witness to the devastating power of the atomic bomb. On August 6, 1945, the first bomb was dropped on the city of Hiroshima in Japan, obliterating buildings and taking the lives of around 140,000 people, many of them vaporized instantly. The horrors did not end there, as thousands more succumbed to radiation poisoning in the months and years that followed. Just three days later, another atomic bomb fell on Nagasaki, with equally catastrophic consequences, claiming the lives of 74,000 people. The Japanese Emperor Hirohito could only describe the destruction as the work of a new and most cruel bomb. Six days after the Nagasaki bombing, Japan surrendered, abruptly bringing an end to World War II. After witnessing the destruction and the devastating impact of the atomic bombs, Oppenheimer expressed remorse and guilt over his creation. He famously quoted the Bhagavad Gita, saying, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds, reflecting the heavy weight of responsibility he felt for the consequences of his work. I think when you play a, a meaningful part in bringing about the death of over 100,000 people and the injury of a comparable number, uh, you naturally uh, don't think of that as with ease. In the years that followed, Oppenheimer became an advocate for international control of nuclear weapons to prevent further devastation and the escalation of a nuclear arms race. He actively supported efforts to promote peace and disarmament seeking to use his knowledge and influence to prevent the misuse of nuclear technology. He became a key advisor on the Atomic Energy Commission, overseeing nuclear research and the development of further weapons. However, Oppenheimer's fortunes took a turn for the worse. In 1953, President Dwight Eisenhower ordered a separation between Oppenheimer and classified information, suspecting him of being a communist spy Oppenheimer denied any deep interest in politics and economics and claimed he was unaware of significant events, such as the 1929 stock market crash. Nonetheless, his connections with left-leaning groups, particularly his involvement with Gene Tatlock, a member of the Communist Party of America, attracted suspicion. Despite this, Oppenheimer's security clearance remained intact during the war years. As the Cold War began and the Soviet Union demonstrated its own successful nuclear test, government officials became increasingly wary of Oppenheimer's affiliations. A letter from William Liscomb Borden, executive director of the United States Congress Joint Committee on Atomic Energy, suggested that Oppenheimer might be an agent of the Soviet Union, although no solid evidence supported this claim. In 1954, Oppenheimer faced a closed-door tribunal to explain his communist affiliations. The hearing lasted four weeks, with Oppenheimer defending himself, stating that his connections to left-wing friends and associations provided a sense of companionship but did not radicalize him. Despite his defense, two out of three board members voted to revoke his security clearance, and the verdict was delivered by Louis Strauss a man who harbored animosity towards Oppenheimer since an earlier congressional hearing. The loss of his security clearance left Oppenheimer feeling humiliated and powerless. His standing among the scientific community was eroded, and even figures like Albert Einstein criticized the decision. Werner von Braun, the architect of the Saturn V rocket that later took humanity to the moon, lamented that in England, Oppenheimer would have been knighted for his scientific contributions. However, there was one scientist who held a different vision from Julius Robert Oppenheimer, the renowned Hungarian physicist Edward Teller. While Oppenheimer had reservations about working on the hydrogen bomb, Teller was eager to push the boundaries of nuclear weaponry. 
When President Truman proposed building it in 1949, Oppenheimer opposed the idea, igniting Teller's anger. The U.S. decided to proceed with the hydrogen bomb, and it became Teller's passion. During the hearings that scrutinized Oppenheimer's loyalty, Teller testified, expressing his preference for public matters to be handled by someone else. However, his testimony led to his exclusion from the scientific community for years. Surprisingly, recently declassified documents from those secret hearings revealed that Oppenheimer was not disloyal. The U.S. Department of Energy confirmed that there was no evidence linking his lack of enthusiasm for the hydrogen bomb to suspicions of disloyalty. I believe we had a great cause to do this, but I do not think that our consciences should be entirely easy at stepping out of the part of studying nature, learning the truth about it, uh, to change the course of human history. Oppenheimer believed that creating a weapon a thousand times more powerful than the atomic bomb was unconscionable. He found the hydrogen bomb unnecessary and feared its potential use against civilians. In his role on the Atomic Energy Commission, he advocated for international control of nuclear weapons to prevent an arms race with the Soviet Union. After having his security clearance revoked, Oppenheimer settled in Princeton, New Jersey, where he continued to run the Institute for Advanced Study. Despite being nominated for the Nobel Prize in physics three times, he never won the prestigious award. In 1962, President John F. Kennedy invited Oppenheimer to a White House dinner for Nobel Prize winners. Although the Kennedy administration offered him a new trial to regain his security clearance, he declined. President Lyndon B. Johnson later awarded him the Fermi Award, one of the highest scientific honors bestowed by a president, along with a tax-free prize of $50,000. Tragedy struck two years later when Oppenheimer was diagnosed with throat cancer, likely exacerbated by his lifelong chain smoking. He passed away on February 18, 1967, at the age of 62. His ashes were spread in the sea off St. John in the U.S. Virgin Islands, a place he cherished during his lifetime, now known as Oppenheimer Beach. The 20th century brought a new era of fear with the threat of nuclear weapons looming over humankind. Even today, the danger persists, with concerns about Russia's potential use of nuclear weapons in Ukraine and North Korea's missile launches simulating attacks on South Korean targets. The story of Julius Robert Oppenheimer reflects the complexities of human ambition, the ethical dilemmas faced by scientists, and the enduring impact of scientific achievements. His work on the atomic bomb and the subsequent development of the hydrogen bomb continue to shape the world we live in today. As we navigate an era where the threat of nuclear weapons still looms large, the legacy of Oppenheimer serves as a poignant reminder of the importance of ethical considerations and global cooperation in harnessing scientific discoveries for the betterment of humanity. What do you think? The atomic bomb, a necessary breakthrough? or a haunting specter of destruction. Like, share, comment, and watch more content like this here.